Let's get excited about Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you turn your Bible over to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, read a couple of verses. I'm going to preach a little bit today about how to stop the sting. Amen. How to stop the sting. Verse 50, chapter 15, 1 Corinthians, verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Before I go any further, let me say this. The Bible said to God, a thousand years is a day, and a day is a thousand years. According to that, my life ain't nothing but a twinkle. So I could be gone in a twinkle. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then it shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, for it gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, I move, always abound in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Uh, three things I want to preach on today. First of all, the sting of death is sin, the strength of sin is the law, and then victory through Jesus Christ. You may be seated. Father, I pray you'd take this stammering tongue and his lips that whisk from time to time stutter even once in a while. But God, I pray you get a hold of it, Father, and may it speak plainly this morning. May it speak the truth. Lord, may it say just what comes up, and it'll come out. May the sweet Holy Ghost do something this morning in the hearts and lives of men and women, boys and girls, that would give them a shield of protection against the satanic darkness of this world. Say that one nearest hell, Revive that backslider. Help that cold and indifferent one, Lord, to get fired up again. In yeah. Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I want to preach to you about how to stop the sting. Death has a sting. Death has a sting. And it must be removed. Without the sting, death would be like Elijah's fiery chariot swooping through the clouds of glory into the eastern gate of heaven. But that sting hurts us and holds us back and takes the joy out and takes the, the spirit out and takes the hope out. And the, you got to get rid of the sting. Yeah. you got to get rid of sin in order to enjoy God like you ought to. Right. And you know you got to get rid of sin in order to go to heaven at all. Yeah. But if it wasn't for sin, life would be just a wonderful thing settling right on through the yeah. glory. Yeah. First of all, the sting of death is sin. <clears throat> death has brought about sin. The Bible said in Romans chapter 5, 12, So wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. You've sinned, I've sinned, everybody has sinned. And the wages of sin is death. You are going to die. I talked to a man one time, say, live above sin. I said, when you quit dying, I'll believe you. The fact is, friend, you're going to yeah, die. Right. Are you ready? Amos 4, 12 said, prepare to meet thy God. Are you prepared? Heaven's a place prepared for prepared people. Yeah. Hell's a place prepared for unprepared people. Yeah. The Bible said God prepared hell for the devil and his angels yeah. and all those who descend into the pit. I'm yeah. telling you, if you don't have Jesus Christ, you're going to go to hell. Yeah. You need to prepare for that and get ready. Yeah. Death has a sting. Yeah. I want to show you that death has a punishment. Death came by sin. Sin has a punishment. Time, therefore, it has the sting. Because, watch this, if we could get to heaven without dying, there would be no sting. Yep. But that unknown death ahead of you has a sting to it. It has a fright to it. It has a scare to it. It has an unknown to it. Yep. Death, my friend, in your eyes and in my eyes is something you're going to have to face but you just don't want to. 
one fellow said, he said this, when I, he said, I know I'm going to die, but I don't, I don't want to be there when it happens. <laughs> You're going to die. Prepare for it. I hope and pray it's not a dark cloud hanging over your head, but it's a ray of glory from heaven. Yeah. Death, my friend. Paul said this, to live is Christ, to die is gain. Yeah. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Yeah. Paul said, and yea, I'm between a great strength. Well, it's better for me to be absent with the body and be with the Lord, but for your sakes, it's better if I remain. The only reason I got to stay here is because of you. Yeah. If it wasn't for people on their way to hell, I could just go on to heaven right now and forget about it. But God wants to leave us here to help one another. Yeah. Paul said, I'd rather be with Jesus. But he'd rather me be here, so I'm here. So do what God said. Like Josh said, get busy in God's business. Death is a sting. It has a sting. Because that death is the penalty of sin. The wages of sin is death. Wages implies three things. Someone who works, someone who pays, that which he gets for working. God said, you sin, I pay, you die. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God. Eternal life. So Jesus got the Lord. And a gift implies three things. Someone who gives, someone who receives, and that which is given. God said, you sin, I pay, you die. But I give, you receive, you live. If you receive Christ upon repentance of your sin, and by faith, God will save your soul, and you'll live forever. Not in this old corruptible body, because flesh and blood can not inherit the kingdom. Just ready to you. But we're going to go into glorified, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And call that be the Lord now. So be the Lord. Thank God I wouldn't enjoy heaven in this body no how. Amen. So I'm going to get a new one. Thank God. Amen. Watch it very quick. I may better hurry. Get bogged down there a little bit. Death stings the sinner. Death stings the sinner. The immoral man. When he dies, the urge for sin stays with him. If you die lost, the problems you have here, you'll take them with you. Yeah. Bible said, he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. Yeah. He is holy, let him be holy still. And he that is unrighteous, he that is unholy, let him be unholy still. Yeah. When you die, you're going to go to hell and you're going to suffer the same things you yes, suffer sir. here, plus hell on top of that. Yeah. The homosexual pervert, yeah. or, the, or the heterosexual pervert, the pervert, yeah. he'll, or she will desire to have that fire put out in her bosom yeah. forever, and it'll never happen. Yeah. No gratification whatsoever in hell. Take the old drunk, for instance. When he goes to hell, he'll have that burning desire, but he'll yeah. never get a drop of water, much yeah. less a cold yeah. beer. Yeah. Hell, my friend, is not a place you want to go. No, right. So quit aiming in that direction. Quit living like you're going there. Yeah. Start living like you're going to heaven. Right. Start doing the things you know you ought to do. Yeah. The infidel who mocks at the gospel. Let me tell you something. You won't brag when you get to hell. You might whoop ten guys down at the bar last night and got dull fist and busted everybody. You might whoop them all there, friend, but you won't brag about it in hell. You're not going to party in hell. You're not going to ride your Harley through hell. You ain't ride through heaven either, though. But the fact is, friend, get your mind on God's business. The old infidel, he lies at the gospel. When sin stings him, like the scorpion of hell, he will not mock anymore. The infidel will not mock anymore. The old drunk will never be satisfied. The pervert, will never, they're not satisfied here. There's not one sexual pervert that's satisfied. <laughs> Gotta have more. Gotta try something different. Gotta do it this way. Gotta do it that way. Yeah. Next thing I know, they're bestiality. You read about the man burning his dog, didn't you? God help us. But back to this, friend. It's going downhill fast, I'm telling you. Yes. Oh, if we could put our bad influence in a bag and get buried with us. When you die, your bad influence still goes on. Your children, your friends, your neighbors, they're still living under the influence of your ill, wicked, ungodly ways. Lead them in the other direction. Yes. 
Let your light shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify the thoughts in heaven. But I tell you today, most of us are given behind bad influence, yeah. bad works, bad examples. You know, the Bible speaks of examples and examples. Example is those outside the church. Example is those inside the church. You're supposed to be a good example and a good example. When you're out there in the world, you're supposed to live like a Christian. When you're in the house of God, you're supposed to live like a Christian. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Thanks, oh, if we can only put our bad influence in the bag, get rid of them when we die. But they, they're left behind. They keep going on yeah. like a stink, like a cancer. Yeah. Still going on. Do you ever have a close call with death or a, a narrow escape and, and see my, uh, all of a sudden you realize, oh, God, I wish I hadn't have done that. Live that way every day. Don't just wait till you get cancer and say, oh, God, I need to get right. Yeah. Don't wait till that car hits you and you break your neck and you lay in the hospital and say, oh, God, I wish I hadn't done so and so. Just get ahead of it. Just don't do it. Live for God. Yeah. Hey. A lot of folks wait till they're in the hospital, they're looking up and can't bend their neck. Yeah. And then start talking to God. Yeah. Yeah. One old man said he was old and 72 years old because that was old for him because he wore plum out. He said, I've wasted my whole life. And now that I'm ready to die, I have got nothing to offer God but my heart. That's what he wanted 50 years ago. Don't wait. Get in today. The thing that makes death so terrible is sin. That's the problem. Man. The thing that makes it so terrible is sin. Death is coming your way. But if it wasn't for sin, you'd never die. If you could live without sinning, God wouldn't kill you. But the wages of sin is death. You're a sinner. God said, all have sinned. And therefore, death passed upon everybody. We're all going to die. Yeah. Down in North Carolina, there's a, a, of course, I've seen a couple of them up here. I've been up here 50 some years, and I've seen a few of them up here. But down in North Carolina, I've got a lot of them. Uh, they look like bumblebees, but they ain't. Look like butterflies, but they ain't. Look like moths, but they ain't. The real name for them is a bumblebee sphinx moth. It's got the tail of a, of a hummingbird. Got clear wings like a bee. Don't have that long beak like a hummingbird, but it's got a thing that rolls out and licks that pollen out of the flowers. And it hovers. It doesn't light. It has to sometimes, but when you see them, they don't light. They just hover like a hummingbird. We caught them hummingbees when I was a boy. We catch them. Boy, you could run a girl all over Crow Hill, Frog Hard, and <laughs> Rabbit Hill. Over the but they don't have a stinger. But everybody thinks they're bumblebees. Some off-bread off butter, 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 but they're not. And they're a lot of fun, really. But that's kind of like it is with you and I. We can't tell if it's got a sting or not. I promise you one thing. If God says it's a sin, it's got a sting. If God said it's a sin, I don't care what the president says, what the Congress says, what the Planned Parenthood says, I don't give a flying rip what you say. If God says it's a sin, bless God, it's got a sting to it. And when you get done with it, you'll find out it stings, man. Like a scorpion out of hell, the Bible said in Revelation. Sin is the enemy, not your friend. It may feel good. The Bible said there's pleasure in sin for a season. Just a little while and it's over. Amen. Fact is this, pleasure in sin for a season, but then comes a sting. Your sin goes with you when you are cast from the great white throne judgment into hell, into the lake of fire. You're going to be that away forever. See, people who live in sin, they like it, but they don't last forever. They got hell to pay. Sin might be pleasant for a season, but then, my friend, it's out of season, and then the guns are on you. We're in trouble, friend, when we love sin. When you belly up to the bar, you're flirting with hell. When you chase that chicken mama, you're headed for hell. Friend, you've got to stop it and turn away from sin. Repent and trust Christ and he'll take you to heaven. With that. The sex pervert and the sex maniac will have that fire forever. The infidel will have that fire forever. The sorcerer, he'll have that same dope desiring drug religion and never can get it. Not one fix in hell. Not one little pain pill in the pits of the damned. Not one little fix. Not one needle shot. Friend, they'll have a desire for it forever and they'll eat them up and they'll never be able to get satisfied. 
Have you ever been around a dope head that went nuts? Oh, yes. Yeah, I know you've probably seen them. They're crazy. I mean, they, they'll do all sorts of crazy things with their mouth or their head and stand on their head and crack up on one arm. And, I mean, they waller, just waller like a nut. Kind of crazy. Can you imagine being that way forever? Plus the hell far all around you all the time, forever and ever. Friend, there's a place called hell and sin this Bible, and I'm preaching to you the truth, whether you like it or not. And they'll never be satisfied forever in hell. But when you go to heaven, you'll never be unsatisfied. Not for a split second will you ever be unsatisfied. I love it. Don't you go here. There's a man named Voltaire who's a great atheist. Oh, he was famous for being an atheist. He wrote books and so forth and talked to everybody out of believing in God, talking out of going to church. Watch what he did when he died. On his deathbed, he cried, quote, I'm abandoned by God and man. Dr. Trochin, I'll give you half of what I, I'm worth if you'll give me six more months of life. Dr. Trochin replied, that cannot be. Yeah. Voltaire said, then I shall go to hell. And you'll go with me. And then he cried this. His last words. The last words of this great infidel atheist. He said this. Oh Jesus Christ. And died. Somebody maybe got saved. Oh he's cussing. That's what he's doing. Here's an infidel reprobate. And he died screaming. Screaming. The name of Jesus Christ. Take another fellow, for instance, old uh, actor Charles Churchill. He died saying this, what a fool I have been. Check out old Thomas Hobbes. He died saying, I'm about to make a leap into the dark. Take Edward Gibson, Gibson, Gibbon. He died saying, all is now lost. Finally, irrevocably lost. All is dark and doubtful. I know not where I'm going. Thomas Paine, great American atheist, he died saying this, Oh, Lord, help me, for I cannot be left alone. Please, Lord, send even a little child to play with me. I'll tell you a story about Percy Ray. He was down in Florida, in Tampa, Florida. Seminole High Baptist Church, Dr. Masters, was a pastor. Great revival. Over 600 people come in each night, and people get saved every night. And there's in the study... After the meeting was over one night, praying about how to get the meeting better and praying for souls. And knock at the door. The preacher gets up, Mathis, and goes and opens the door, and there's a young college student, young man. He said, Young man, what can I do for you? He said, I hear there's a man here named Percy Ray, a great evangelist, and I, I want to talk to him. I've asked other people questions, and they can't help me. And I think maybe he might can help me. He said, Well, come on in. He said, I've got uh, another friend of mine and two girls out here. Can they come in too? He said, yeah, bring them on in. So the other man and the two girls sat down in a, 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 a love seat over here. And this guy sat down in a seat beside the desk. Percy raised the desk. And Brother Master sat over here. Percy raised said, young man, what can I do for you? He said, well, sir, I've heard about you. And I've asked people questions. And they can't help me. I may, maybe you can help me. He said, okay, but you've got to tell me the truth. You've got to tell me the truth. He said, I will. He said, uh, what's your problem? He said, there's no God. He said, what do you say? <laughs> he said, there's no God. What do you mean, there's no God? He said, to me, there's no God. He said, well, let me ask you some questions, the person said. When you was a little boy, did you believe in God? Oh, yes, and all little kids believe in God. He said, well, uh, when you was young, did you believe in prayer? He said, yes, all, all, all little kids believe in prayer. He said, well, uh, did you ever stand on a hillside when the sun was going down and see the rays going through them trees? You kind of think, maybe there's another world out there somewhere. He said, oh, yeah, all kids believe in stuff like that. I said, uh, yeah, I did, I do, I did, yeah. He, well, he said, when, when did you quit? He said, quit what? He said, quit believing that there's a God. Quit believing in prayer and quit believing in another world out there. He said, oh, nobody arrested me that before. The sweat come out of his forehead and started running down. He said, nobody arrested me that before. He said, well, I'm asking you, not a man an answer. He said, well... I can tell you, I'll tell you when it was. He's like enrolled in this University of Florida, an extension in Tampa. And my lot fell in the class of the smartest man in the state. Nobody in the United States of oh, in Florida, in the state of Florida, has a higher IQ than this man. And said, when we walked in his class, 
If you had a sign that says, when you come into my class, hang your religion on the door because there's no God. He said, right away, some of the girls turned and walked out and got out of his class. He said, I went on in. He said, and this man would fly off on God, cussing him, spitting on the Bible, turning pages out, stoning them, throwing them in the garbage can. Cuss God, make fun of the Bible. He said, and I sat there and thought, well, I'm in Christ, might as well go through it. He said, and later on, said, I decided if I stayed after Christ and talked to him and, uh, and agreed, agreed with him, he might give me a better grade. He said, so I started standing after Christ and talking to him. He gave me a book by Thomas Paine and another by Robert Ingersoll, two well-known atheists. He said, you read these books and you can argue against God as good as I can, maybe better. He said, okay, so I read books, studied them books, began to believe them books. He said, I got to stand after school talking to this guy, this big, big uh, atheist teacher. He said, and I got to believe him. He said, one day the teacher went off on God like he never had before. He said, the girls were chewing their fingernails and blood coming out of their fingernails. He said, jump up and close it and run out the, with their fingers in their ears. He said, see that? Superstition. That's all superstition. That's all superstition. He said, and all of a sudden, there's five girls who must have had it planned. They're sitting behind me. They jumped up and said, Professor, we defy you. There is a God. His name's Jesus Christ. And I jumped up and pointed my finger in their eyes and said, there is no blankety-blank God. He said, right then, he said, preacher, have you ever had a tight baseball hat on in a hot summer day and you, you take it off and the wind goes through your hair and your, heart, your scalp kind of relaxes and gets a chill? He said, that's what it felt like. He said, that's what it felt like. He said, from that day to now, he said, something slipped off between my skull and my brain. And since that day to now, there's been no God. The other three young people fell on their knees and started screaming for mercy. This boy went outside and started stomping the sidewalk and cussing the heavens. I'm telling you, friend, there are people in this world that will tell you we're killing anything and everything. Yes. And I don't know why. Why do they want to destroy little children? Why do they want to destroy little children? But they'll do that on purpose and think they're something special. Silly women laden with iniquities. Yeah. Little children sleeping wild favors. Friends, God's on the throne and there is a devil who's very active. An atheist can talk you into just about anything. And don't let your kids get in them chat rooms. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. they can, they've got a slick tongue. They can talk them into yeah. anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you women... Don't get in the chat room talking to some handsome man somewhere. He'll say, your old man ain't no good. You come over to my place. He's a whoremonger. Amen. Tell him I said so. Back to this. Old Thomas Paine, atheist. The sinner's ultimate doom is literal, a literal burning, flaming hell forever. Death stings a man when he sees he's going to hell. And realize that God put him there. A man said, God don't send you to hell. Read your Bible. Yeah. Somebody said, you send yourself there. Now who's going <laughs> to throw them in hell? No, he gives the name of charge and they cast you in there. I know you go there because the way you live, the way you carry on, the way you act. But who's going to cast yourself in hell? No, you ain't stupid. Surely that's stupid. God gives his angels charge over them and they cast them into the fire. The fact is, friend, when you get to hell, you realize that God's just and you're not. God's right and you're wrong. God's holy and you're unholy. God's true and you're a liar. God said, let God, let, I said, let God be true and all men liars. God wins. Can you understand that, folks? Why do you resist the winner? Well, sin, number two, the strength of sin is the law. God made some laws to govern the spirits of men. God wrote laws to govern the spirits of men. And when you break those laws, there's a break in communications, a break in spirit, and you are walking in darkness. Not like, no more light. God has laws which demand 
on the spirits of men. Sin is so strong and the sting is so powerful because the law is so demanding. God don't say, God didn't say, uh, uh, don't, don't commit adultery. He said, thou shalt not yeah. commit adultery. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Right. He wasn't writing words just to fill a book. He meant what he said. He said what he meant. Yeah. 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 God's laws are to govern men. Right. And when we break God's laws, man suffers. Yeah. Yeah. Ask the president, John. Ask Congress, John. Yeah. Who legalized homosexuality. Now, ain't that a sign? Who legalized abortion? Ain't that something? Yep. Who legalized adultery? Now that's really something. My friend, you might say it's right. The government might say it's right. But when God says it's wrong, it is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> the laws of God, they're demanding. The laws of God offer no mercy. The laws of God offer no forgiveness. The laws of God requires perfection. The law of God demands a penalty for sin. I'm talking about God's law, not man's red lights. We run them every day. I'm talking about God's laws. God's laws. You might mock them like the infidel. You might mock them like the atheist. You might mock them like a drunk. You might mock them like the whore. But they're going to come down on your head. Thou shalt not. Whatever, whoever offends in one point, the Bible said offends in all. He said, well, so-and-so did such and such. <laughs> what are you doing today? We can always find that moat in the other fellow's eye when we've got two four in our own. Yeah, that's right. Sawdust in his and yeah. beam in yours. Victory in Jesus. That's what we want to get to all the time. Well, one more time, the sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which gives us a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The thing that makes death so terrible is the sting. Someone must pull that stinger and, and turn into a butterfly. Yeah. If you get my drift. They might look the same. You might think of them as the same. But those who've been born again by the sweet Holy Ghost, death has no sting. Yeah. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. Paul said to live as Christ, to die is gain. Oh, in the book Ecclesiastes 17, 1, 7, 1, 7, 1, says this. said, the day of one's death is better than the day of one's birth. Yes. Wow. When you wake up in this world, wake up a few days, many trouble. Wake up and have no troubles. One yeah. eternal day. Yeah. Have far better sight in this world. I, I, I like it here. I've got a beautiful wife, good church, a lot of friends. Got more money than I spend. But the thing is, heaven's better than this. Like I said before, all this in heaven too. Can't be today, man. Shout that. <laughs> Victory in Jesus. Well, Jesus doesn't pull that stinger. He doesn't, he doesn't destroy death. He doesn't take the power of death away from him. And has the keys of death and hell in his own vesture. Jesus is the one done, done, done de-stung the devil. Done de-stung death. Done took the power out of him. We have strong laws, yes. But a stronger Savior. Strong, great demands. But Jesus fulfilled all those demands. He was born a babe. Lived 33 years perfectly. Died sinlessly, but he had your sins and mine on him. He was the only one who ever fulfilled every jot and tittle of the law and died without sin. So he can be able to succor those who are tempted. Christ died for sinners of whom I am chief, said Paul. Christ didn't have sins of his own. He had my sins on him, yeah. your sins on him. He died for the sins, listen, in Revelation 1 says, for the sins of the world. That's what he did. For the sins of the whole world. And whosoever will may come and drink of the water of life. Jesus, stronger than death. Jesus, stronger than sin. Jesus, stronger than the law. He fulfilled it every bit. The sin of Savior became our perfect substitute and bore our sins in his own body on the tree, the Bible says. In every point, in every demand, in every law, every jot, every tittle, he satisfied a holy God. Yes, and God was so satisfied with Jesus when he said he was finished. You trust that finished work of Christ, yeah. and God, for Christ's sake, will forgive you and take you to heaven. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> so simple gospel. Christ died for sinners. I'm a sinner. The Lord yes. saved me. Forgive me. And he done it. Yeah. Hey, it's just amazing they've made. Great demands, yes, but a great Savior. 
Death is still to be dreaded. But thank God the stinger's gone. Yeah. Now look at me very quick. I'll take a still a little longer pill. Because I like to still a little longer. If I drop dead right now, I'd be the happiest man alive. Shout that. Fell a little rip there. To live is Christ, to die is gain. Man pulled a knife on me one time, and I was jump over his fence, cut your cuss. Go ahead, I'll go help you go to hell. <laughs> you ain't scared of me, I said, not one bit. He folded up his knife, found out as a back, a backslid son of a preacher down in Mumford, Phil, Kentucky. <laughs> he said, I'm going to leave this city and go back to the country. I said, that's the thing you need to do. Yeah. Go back to the old home church, back to the old path, yeah. back to the old landmark, yeah. back where you found the Lord and yeah. pick it up and go again, old prodigal yeah. son. Yeah. Get out of the hog pit and head for the castle. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. yes, sir. And, he, and, he, and he's crying when he walked away. I love you, glory to God. Death is still to be dreaded. Still have a stinger to those who are lost. But thank God those who are saved. Stand <laughs> death is gone. We win, we win. I'm going to hurry up and close out here so you get, get kind of tired looking. But listen to this. When I was a boy in high school, played football four years. Littlest count, littlest guy on the team. Me and Larry Lill, the two little runs. And I got to play very little. But I did get to play and make the team. I got to play when it was way ahead. Or I got to play when it was way behind. <laughs> But when it really mattered, I didn't count. <laughs> when it didn't matter, I didn't count. Same way with salvation. Before I got saved, the devil let me do a few things. When it was, when it was bad. After I got saved, God let me preach. Whatever thing that really counted, Jesus done it. I had a five-year perk attendance badge, Sunday school badge, five years of perk attendance before I ever got saved. The devil lets you do a little things here and there. But after you get saved, God lets you do some things. I would be out here doing the wonderful, wonderful things of God and something I can boast about. You see, I made the team, but it wasn't no good. Scored one touchdown in four years. Had to wear a bullet helmet because the head was small. That's when Ronald Reagan wore, you remember. <laughs> didn't even have a bar around the front. Brought my collar bubble senior year and didn't have, had to drop out. I, I had a bad time playing football. But I was on the team. They didn't use me for nothing except water boy and something. But I was on the team, but it didn't help nobody do nothing. The team would be just as well off without me. They, they didn't need me. But I didn't want to sing in the choir and be a sissy and all that kind of stuff. So I tried to be a football player. But what I'm trying to tell you is this. The devil will let you do a few things that don't count. But if you get saved by the grace of God, God will do some things in you that will count. Amen. <laughs> But Jesus did what really counts. Yeah. Amen. When it comes to what really counts, you do a little something here, you do a little something there, but what he did is what matters. Yeah. Trust Christ in his finished yeah. work. Yeah. Now, victory over sin and death is found only in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. That bumblebee one time got in the car, and the little girl in the back seat was alerted to bee stings. And she was screaming, screaming. The father was trying, trying to drive, and the bee got in the windshield. He took his hand and he crushed, crushed against the windshield. Well, it killed the bee, but during the process, it popped him in the palm of the hand. Yeah. Hand swelled up and got all red and puffy. Mm. But the little girl even killed her if it stung her. Yeah. The fact is, Jesus <laughs> took the stinger out of it, friend. Yeah. Yeah. It hurt him. It hurt him bad. Yeah. <laughs> but it'll never hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> he knew that back under somewhere was yeah. an old boy named Sonny Mo yeah. and somebody yeah. had to take the stinger. Yeah. Oh, Hallelujah, God, amen. amen. Woo! Yeah. Amen. The stinger death is sin, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. 
one time old Mac, uh, Mays Jackson had a little grandson, and his grandson had a little bib overall, no shirt on him. Yeah. Back in the summertime. He said, going, Brother Bob, I heard this, and they told him. And he's going to the, to the post office. And a bumby got in the little boy's, in the little boy's uh, yeah. cover, uh, overalls. And, and he grabbed it and, and pinched, the, pinched the tail off of it yeah. and, and left it in there, put it back in there. The little boy's screaming and hollering, screaming. He said, won't hurt you now, son. I pulled his stinger off. The little boy didn't want no bee, much less a stinger. Yeah. A bee might scare you, but he ain't got no stinger. Yeah. Ain't no sense to worry about it. Yeah. Death might be frightening, and it is. I ain't going to have to do it but once. But some of them going to do it twice. Yeah. The second death like a far, I ain't going there, amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Death might still be ugly, but thank God for those who are in Christ Jesus yeah. that don't have no stake. Yeah. Ain't got no power. Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, sin, where is thy strength? Yeah. I'll tell you, Jesus Christ gave the victory over sin, death, yes. hell, and the grave. I'm going to quit right here. A man named Billy Bray, great Christian. He said, glory, glory, glory to God. I'm, I'll soon be in heaven. <laughs> oh, D.L. Moody, great Methodist Baptist. He said this, this is my triumph. This is my coronation day. Yeah. That's what he said when he was dying. You know, you can get rid of sin. And with it, the sting of death. By repenting of your sin today, asking God to forgive you, and trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. So simple. Repent. Ask forgiveness. And by faith, receive Christ as your Savior. Yeah. Yeah. Today is the first day yeah. of the rest of your life. Yeah. And today's the last day of your old life. Yeah. What are you going to do with this day? Yeah. This day. What a difference one day might make. Let's stand. God help us. How to take the sting out of death. How to stop the sting. How to stop it. Only Jesus Christ can stop it. If you'll trust him, he will stop it. Stop it. And you don't have to fear death no more. You don't have to fear it no more. Matter of fact, some folks are actually looking forward to it. I've met many of them that, oh, I wish I could go today and preach it. I wish I could leave now. When life gets so miserable, so pitiful, so sorry and sore and sad that you don't want to live here no more, you've got to find somewhere else to go. If you got dead right now, where would you go? Come on, let's go. We're going to sing one more verse, but let me, let me, please listen. Today is the day of salvation, what the Bible says. Today is the day of salvation. Harden not your heart. Stiffen not your neck as it is today of provocation. For you shall be suddenly cut off without remedy. If you could find a remedy for cancer, you'd be a multi-billionaire for dollar. But you can't. And when you die in your sins, there's no remedy for that. Good day today. Make no boast of tomorrow. For no man knows what day may bring forth. And Jesus said the cares of this day are sufficient. You got enough trouble now. So do something like you can.